In this video, I'm going to review how to understand the view settings and the analytical settings for viewing a scan. I'm going to start with a PS1000 GPR scan. And then in the another video, I'm going to go through a PS300 Ferroscan scan. Now, it's going to be a longer video, and I'll make sure in the description that I put timestamps for each thing I'm going to go over. But let's start by getting it open first. So as you remember, I have this test project, and what you can notice is I have two scans in here. I have a GPR scan and a basement with wall cable ferrule scan. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this scan to open it, and let's go through the options that you have with this scan on the PSA200. Now before I get into anything, I want to make sure that you bring your attention to the help button in the top right corner. That is going to be a huge resource for you as you're trying to understand all these different settings. If you have any questions going forward, that's where I refer you to click on and look because you're going to get an image that looks like this. As you can see, it's a online PDF that you don't need an internet connection for. It's just an online version of a PDF file that you can click through the hyperlinks to find the answers to the questions you might be looking for. And the nice thing about it is that as you go through the software, you'll notice that when you press that help button, it's going to open automatically to the page of the PDF that you are most likely going to need based on where you are in the software at the time. So please keep that in mind. It's the help button in the top right corner. If you have questions about anything going forward, that's a good resource for you to study it up a little bit to get a better idea. So let's just go through these options one by one and I'll timestamp it and feel free to click on the timestamp that you need information for. So the first one is the ability to toggle between 2D and 3D. It's simply a click and it's a preference of how you want to view the data and you'll get used to using this in the way that you want to. So for my purposes, I'm gonna stay in 2D mode for a little bit. The second thing is your parameters. I'm gonna click this option. You have the ability to change your dielectric value, which is here. That's a preference for you. And for more information, here is the help guide. If you can see, I went to the search option in the top left corner of the help guide, and they just typed in parameters, and it pulled up uh, one of the fifth, the fifth option on the left side of the search results was understanding the parameters in the PS1000 analysis and you can see that it goes through the different dielectric settings that you want to set for concrete given your situation. So I recommend you play with this as much as you can to make sure that your depth and your view settings look to the way that you need them in order for you to do your proper analysis of your scan. And this is just simply your option. Do you want to see things in standard mode or advanced? Advanced will basically highlight more objects for you, even objects that the, the software is assuming are not critical. So if you see here, I'll go into advanced and you'll notice that they're gonna see a little bit more things highlighted, especially deeper in the scan, as you see down here. And that's a view preference that you can just choose. So I'll go ahead and keep that active as I go forward. Your visualization tab, you'll notice a few things. You can have the ability to have these cross sections change a little bit. So right now I have it on default, but if I wanted to, I can change that data to look different based off what I prefer. The descriptions of what all these do is in the videos for Profus Detection and also in the help manual as well. But to be clear, what I usually use when I use cross sections is I have them set to default is one of the ones I usually use. Or I use gained if I want to see objects deeper below. If I go ahead and change my color scheme from blue to gray, you'll see what I mean. It basically gained will let me see the deeper objects as if they are at just as strong hyperboles as the ones on top, as if the radar is hitting it just as strongly. It does its best to analyze the data as if the radar wave is the same strength all the way down deep into the slab. And then the last one I'd like to use is the raw mode, and it shows you the hyperboles, and it also will show you that as you go deeper, that yes, the radar wave is getting weaker as well, uh, which is natural. So you can kind of see how that signal changes in strength as well as you go down. So your preference, but those are the three that I use, gained, raw, and default. And if you need more information on that, I encourage you to look at the help manual for Profus Detection or those other videos that you see below. Color scheme is just what you saw me mess with. It's just simply your preference of how you like to view the data. I usually toggle between gray and blue but there are a lot of options in there for you. And one of the benefits of having the PC software is that you can toggle through these a little bit quicker. Contrast is completely your preference. It'll let you determine how clear and crisp the data is. As you increase the contrast, you're gonna lose some of these weaker looking signals. However, 
for me, when I'm using default mode, I like to have my contrast as low as possible. I don't mind seeing more objects. When I'm in raw and gained mode, sometimes they turn my contrast up, but I just encourage you to play with that as your preference goes forward. Grid, let me turn this off so you can see. Grid is simply if you want to be able to see this white grid of where you had your scan grid down. If you want to see these, you can turn that on and off, your preference. If you had an EM sensor, turned on during your scan you could be you would have the ability to turn this on and off this is from that expert mode that I mentioned in the settings in my current situation the EM sensor was turned off when I did the scan so it is not even able to be turned on right now because it was not on when the scan was done so I'm gonna switch over to a scan that I had it turned on so you can see this so here's a scan I'm gonna turn this off in a second that has the EM sensor turned on and when I use the EM sensor you can toggle between filter mode or just normal mode or of course you can also turn it off this is just simply view preferences filtered basically will clean it up a little bit for you but sometimes i like to just keep it turned on to see the full data and let me show you what am will look like you can see here that a conduit of some sort is obviously in the slab and this red color here is indicating where that conduit is pulling live electricity and let me make a quick note i've made a quick note about this before in other videos but if you are using the em sensor please remember that it's simply a guide it's not perfectly accurate it's just trying to pull as much electromagnetic activity that it can find and sometimes that's interfered with electrical boxes nearby or other th or even cell phones or things like that in the area so just know that this isn't always 100 percent perfect but it certainly could help you and be a guide for you and these just simply let you change the contrast for your electromagnetic activity sensor that you saw or the transparency whether or not you want to see that more transparent or not so you can see the other parts of your radar scan so that's what the em sensor looks like and if that's something that you need that's how you adjust some of the settings on the view so now let me go back to the other scan i was working with now let's go ahead and move on to extras i don't use all these options but i can go over them a little bit with you audio is simply will let you record yourself discussing this scan specifically and you can have that saved to this specific file so I could press record. You can see I'm recording over here. I can say a few things. I'll stop it. And then I can play that back to myself. And that is now saved to the scan data. And it's in here for anybody that's looking at this to listen to again if they want to come in here and play it again. I am only able to add one piece of audio to this file. So just keep that in mind. If you need to edit it or change it, you're going to have to delete it and re-record it. The next thing on the extras is this create icon button. You'll see that I pressed that button and it just had that loading screen. But what that means is when I go back, that is now the icon to represent the double layer rebar mat. So if you want to change what this thumbnail looks like, that's how you do it. It's in that extras tab. You can also create a PDF. I'll go to click on this and we'll talk about it. You'll notice that it pulls open Internet Explorer because that is what I have as my PDF viewer on the tablet. If I had another PDF viewer installed on the tablet, it would open that up. But what it does is it opens up a PDF of the image that you were just looking at. And with the name at the top and the day that it was scanned, as I scroll down, it will also tell you where your crosshairs were at the time that you exported the scan and what your view settings were set at. You can see, remember, I changed it to advanced, saving it as advanced. And the drill holes that I have in there, which we're going to review in a moment, are in here as well that I put in there. So the question that... Um, I had when I first started is, well, how can I edit this? Well, this is another one of those things that you actually can't do much to this PDF if you export it out of the PSA 200. You can do as best you can, but in the end, um, what I've ended up doing is that if I have to export from the PSA 200 as a PDF, what I usually do is I go onto my browser and I type in ilovepdf.com, and I won't go into it too deep, but you can actually take that PDF and convert it into a Word document where you can edit it further. Now this is another thing about the PC software is that you can actually on the PC software export it as a Word document itself so you can edit it right away but if you don't have any other choice and you have to export this and save it as a PDF document you can put that on a USB and later go onto the website and convert it to a Word document if you need to. So just let you know that that's an option and uh, it's also a limitation by using a lighter version of the software. The next option on extras is this lock depth option and not that you could see it but you can see that right here I have this little diamond that just popped up all this means is that the depth settings can no longer be changed I cannot move my depth window at all those little bars that you see at the bottom until I unlock the depth again and this is just to protect me from making any adjustments to the calibration of the depth that I've already set via my concrete settings so what I can do is go to extras and press this unlock depth button and that'll let me start changing it again and recalibrate my depth. It's going to warn me that the uh, scaling will be able to be changed if I unlock it. 
And as long as I'm okay to do that, which I am in this case, I can go ahead and press yes in the top left corner. Once I do that, I can now come in here and you, if you take your finger and long press on the cross-sectional views, you'll see these icons pop up. And these are essentially the drag options for your depth. You can drag this bottom icon here that looks like an equal sign to change the thickness of the material in the concrete that you want to look at from the top or the top of your depth view. And you can see the center of the scan is changing and showing me more information. The main thing to remember is that essentially when this is locked, you don't have to worry about accidentally adjusting the settings you have to view your depth correctly that you've set. So essentially the idea is you do all you can to make sure that you've calibrated your depth correctly, you lock it in there, and then you know you're okay. Okay, this last one, this reset zoom option really is only applicable when you're in 3D mode. And let me show you what I mean. Let's say I was looking at my scan and it was tilted this way and I wanted to get it perfectly back down to top down view. I go to extras, I go to reset zoom, and boom, it goes back to top down view automatically. So that's all that, that that's there for. But let me show you one last option in this extras. You notice that we're in 3D mode and there's a new option under extras that you can do with 3D. You can do a 3D export. Let me click on that and let's talk about that. And when you do that, what it does is it saves it as an X 3D image that you can see here. So I don't have a program on my PSA 200 that can read X3D images, but I do on my computer. And I'll go ahead and drag that window over to overlay this. But you can see here, this is a, an X3D viewer. I didn't pay anything for the software. I believe it's free. Um, but you can go ahead and get this, and you'll be able to open this up on a computer and be able to see this in 3D mode after the fact if you need to. But this is this is from the, the PC software. These are the other file formats that you can export on the PC software. Um, on the PSA 200, you can only do X3D, but on the PC software, you have the ability to do a DXF, which will let you save it as a CAD file type, or these other two that I've never used before, but there are other 3D imaging as well. So if you know these file types, these are available on the PC software. Um, on the PSA 200, the only thing you can do is export it as a X3D image, which is also good. Now lastly, I'm going to go over the drill hole option. You can already see I have a few drill holes in here. But essentially, when you have your crosshairs over a section that you want to put a hole, so right now this is where my crosshairs are, and you want to indicate that, you just simply indicate the diameter that you want it to be at. So let's say I have a hole that I need to drill 1.5 inches. I'll say OK, and you'll notice that it puts a hole right there. And what's nice about it is that even when you have your crosshairs over it, you'll be able to see it striking through the cross-sectional view if you have your crosshairs over it like this. So you can kind of see what it looks like, just like you saw in 3D view. That's how you add holes, and it's as simple as that. Now on the PC software, when you do drill holes, you have the ability to add a little bit more information about them. You can add comments about what they are if you need to, um, and edit, edit them a little bit easier. But uh, it's essentially the same concept um, in, this, in the PSA 200 as they are in the PC software. So I just went through everything. And the last thing I'll say about the difference between this software and the PC software that you haven't seen yet is in the PC software, what you can do is you can have different what they call snapshots. So let's say that I'm doing this work in here and I want to save all this annotation and these drill holes that I've done but then I want to do another one on a clean slate with the same scan, you have the ability to do that in the other software, save multiple versions of the scan all in the same file and just kind of toggle between them. On this one, you can't. Um, if you need to do that, what I'd recommend is simply to re-import the scan under a different name and keep doing work that way. But again, I think this is plenty to get you started. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave questions in the comments. And uh, I do recommend that you reach out to Hilti Support if you need more help on it as well. They're probably experienced users on their end as well that can help you.